Greetings everyone and welcome to Collector Corpse and welcome to another Poundland special but this one really is special. It's a very special Poundland special because we're going to be looking at Poundland exclusive action figures and I'm sure plenty of you have seen stuff like this before where it's just, you know, very basic, very cheaply made, low quality stuff that's just thrown on the shelves at Poundland or even Pound World when those existed and 99p stores and all the other nonsense that's, up, that's occurred over the last 20 years. But this is something different. Today we're going to be looking at Final Faction and this is something that I've been really looking forward to coming to the UK for a decent while. Essentially this was a, I think it was Dollar Tree exclusive originally over in the US and they are a bunch of three and three quarter scale action figures. They're actually pretty high quality. So as you can see, they're on a pretty basic card back. Though unlike a lot of the actual like Poundland produced stuff, they actually have a card back back. Meaning that rather than just having a plain white back with just the barcode on it, you actually get a little collect them all with all the different characters, a little fact file, like a G.I. Joe type thing. They're a very well-made set of figures, and on top of that, I'm pretty sure, though I haven't watched it myself, there is supposed to be some sort of online-only, YouTube-only animated series relating to these, just like G.I. Joe back in the 90s and the 80s. And, yeah, so first off, I do have the full set, but I am going to start off with Steadfast, and, you know, they're just on basic card backs with bubble packaging which makes them pretty easy to open. I say that. It's been a while since I've opened something in this sort of basic packaging but immediately you can tell that it's a little bit higher quality than you'd usually expect from a Poundland toy. Now I will admit when it comes to articulation you have rotation of the arm, you have forward on the leg, you have a little bit of back. I think it is different depending on the figure but you know not too much on, on this one and rotation at the head. Pretty basic stuff, very similar to a lot of like Star Wars figures, but you know, nothing special, nothing to write home about. And you get a little weapon or some sort of accessory, and in this case you actually get a little helmet as well, which just goes on his head like so. Very neat. But yeah, these are actually really high quality figures, and it's interesting talking about something like this, because I recently, oh, not recently, but I have looked at, in the past, things like the Alien Collection and the Predator Collection, which are other cheap toy lines, though those are licensed, which are also considerably cheap for what they are, on top of being very high quality. And it's remarkable that something like this could end up in pound shops. And as I say, they were originally, I believe, Dollar Tree exclusives, and just came over to the UK for Poundland. And... You know, they do have some of the cheaper toy aesthetics, like having, you know, massive holes for the screws and stuff, and i say the articulation is a bit mediocre, but look at this figure and tell me that it doesn't look like something you'd find in the 80s or 90s for probably a decent amount of money. It's really not well done. The moulding is really nice. Things like this chest plate or whatever the body is made out of or supposed to be has a really nice wash to it. There's actually some metallic paint in the helmet, which is really good, and then taking off the helmet, though they're not, you know, brilliant, that's actually not a bad face, and, you know, the detailing is pretty well printed on. There's a bit of scarring, which is quite nice, you get the ears, which is always appreciated on something like this. They're just very neat little figures, and obviously the weaponry is a bit sci-fi, it's a bit, you know... Yeah, sci-fi is the best word to describe it, but, you know, they look pretty good, they're well moulded, no print or, you know, paint de detail, but honestly, pretty good, and they just fit pretty well into the hands of these characters, you even have trigger fingers on, uh, on them, which is something that is always really nice to see, something to give a bit more realism to the posing and stuff, and, yeah, like, without the articulation, they are a little bit mediocre, but... Like, honestly, they are really cool. But, as I say, this is kind of the leader character for the good guys, for the humans. That does mean there has to be a alien threat or a alternate threat. And that is in the form of these things. Which, 
I mean, this is a really interesting design. Just off the little, you know, image, the art for it, it is actually really cool. And it's kind of a unique design as well. It's something that you don't normally see. Now, this is a Hive Class drone. And, yeah, opening this one up, same sort of packaging, pretty much identical, in fact. And just opening that up, once again, you have a figure and you have a singular accessory this time with this blue kind of halo-esque weapon but all the articulation is the same with the figure you know you've got rotation you've got forward back you've got rotation of the head all very good and then the detailing is actually really nice as well i love the red on the eyes there's some nice metallic flaking sort of look which you know, it's something that we don't even see that often with expensive lines. You know, Hasbro doesn't really do this sort of effect very often. And yeah, overall, it's a very cool design. Once again, screws in the back. It's a cheap toy. They kind of have to have things like that for them to stay as cheap as they are. But, you know, when you look at this, you can't say, oh, this looks like it cost a pound. You know, you'll look at this and be like, oh, that, that probably cost a fiver. You know, that probably cost... You know, a little bit more than most cheap action figures, and that's one of the nice things about it. Once again, weapon just fits pretty snugly into the hand. Really nice effect there. I do like the contrast of having a bright blue weapon with this, like, purple skin tone, and that kind of follows over with the rest of the aliens, but, yeah, it's a very nice thing. And in terms of scale to each other, they actually work really well. I like how the aliens are a little bit smaller, or at least the drones are. It gives them... An alien aspect, you know, on top of all the things like the weird legs, the like, um, is it horses or something? Or gazelles or something that have that sort of leg? Very interesting design. It's very... I mean, it's alien for sure, but it's, it's also like gross. It's kind of vile to look at in a lot of ways. And I just think that's a really interesting aesthetic for an enemy faction. And... Yeah, as I say, there are, I have the entire range, so just quickly going over them in packaging, we have Steel, which is, as Ashens pointed out when he did videos about this, very much like a Falcon from Marvel knockoff, and as well as the fact that he's called Steel, which is another Marvel character, but looks very cool, has a wing jetpack sort of thing, very neat. We also have Rook, which is like your heavy character, has like a communication pack on him, or a turret and stuff, you know, kind of like a war machine type character. Very neat little character, and I like the color scheme on it, very militaristic. We also have the only female character of the line, Shift, who is generic G.I. Joe female character, has swords, pretty cool overall, I like it, very neat design. Then the final character from the Alpha Team 1 good guy team is ACRM, who is the biggest good guy, I suppose, and is also a robot, which is very neat. And knowing what I know about the story, this is basically a drone, actually controlled by a... I think a child is actually controlling it, so it's kind of like Big Hero 6 in a lot of ways, as in the comic book version, not the movie. And, yeah, once again, really neat design. And then that does bring us on to the final two, which are the Alien Brute which looks really neat, a very Doom-esque character, and even this one comes with a weapon, a very big weapon, but a weapon nonetheless. I really like this one. And then finally, the main, you know, big bad guy, the Symphoid, which, very odd design to it, but still very neat. And overall, I really like this entire range, but let's open them all up, see how they all compare, look at them with the accessories, and, uh, yeah, we'll just have a proper look at the entire range. And first up, I think it's only right we start with the good guys. Obviously, we've already looked at Sudfast, but he really does look like a leader by comparison to the rest of them. The rest of them very much look like they would be taking orders from Sudfast, and I really like that cohesion, I suppose, within the line. But moving him out of the way, I guess, first let's look at Steel. So, Steel, as I say, is very much... A knockoff version of Falcon. And I think that's in a lot of ways. He has the wings, the jetpack sort of look. He has a very combat ready, you know, suit. And the obvious thing, which I'm not going to really point out, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, it is very much that sort of character, that sort of gap that's being filled. 
But I think they do a really good job of it. I think that the wings are, while a bit plain, you know, they could do with some paint application maybe, are really neat and allow for some really nice, you know, play, I guess. It's a really nice thing that there's this sort of character within the wave. It gives a bit of variety to the type of scenarios you can think up. And overall, as I say, articulation is the same for every single figure, unless I specifically say it's not. But yeah, I really think that this works, and it's a very cool little figure. I really like the design on it, the, you know, the brown on it really stands out. The grey on the knee pads, really good look. And just generally, it's a really well done figure, and, you know, it's a really cool one to actually have. Next up, we'll look at Rook, who is definitely the heavy of the group. He has a nice turret on his shoulder, which just clips in. It can be clipped in on either side, that there's not really any reason to. And a really nice thing that I do appreciate, it can be raised. And that's something that you don't even see with a lot of War Machine like action figures from Hasbro, which it's a really nice feature to be able to move it around. You know, you can have him just firing forward, and then maybe you can have him doing aerial support, you know, firing to the sky to take out some alien craft. Or you can just have it in a neutral stance where he's just, you know, at ease and he's not actually, you know, fighting in any way. And I really do appreciate that. He does have a nice backpack which is just clipped on. All these characters do have a peg on the back to plug in various accessories. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure which way this is supposed to go. I like it. I like the aesthetic of it being up. Uh, it's kind of like a fuel tanker. An issue would probably be the ammunition for the turret. But overall, it's a very good look. I love the army aesthetic, he looks like a tank. And that's probably on purpose because of the fact that he comes with the tank turret. But yeah, the army green, the grey, and the metallic green that's kind of scratched away. It's a really good look. I also really like how he has, like, some sort of techno stuff attached to his head. It's a very nice look, and it's something a bit different. You know, he's very much cybernetic. And sure, we saw with Steadfast, he has a robot arm. But, you know, it's nice to have a bit more variety. This guy looks like someone who's very heavily augmented. And overall, it's a very good look. We'll look at Shift next. And I do think she's probably the worst of the good guys, unfortunately, which is a shame. She's the only female character in the line so far. And overall, she is actually a pretty good figure. Like, as you can see, she's actually decently easy to stand, which is something that I can't say for a lot of female characters, or even male characters, within things like Marvel Legends. And sure, these are much smaller than that, much more simple in articulation, but being able to stand, especially with smaller feet, like female characters tend to do, is a really nice feature. And she has, you know, a hair sculpt, which is pretty well done. I quite like it. It's overall a bit plain, could do with, like, some highlights maybe or something, but... It looks good. The red on the outfit looks really nice. The green tactical glove sort of look. Really, really cool. And then you get two swords for it to dual wield, which... Pretty neat. I like the design. The scabbard's even got a bit of detail on it. Overall, very nice design. Though, unfortunately, this one is a little bit bent at the actual hilt. Which is a softer material, so it probably just needs a little bit of heat and straightening, it, straightening out. This one, though, is bent right in the middle of the blade. Which, uh, once again, a bit of heat will probably fix this pretty easily. But it's a shame that it came out of the packaging like this. The one nice little feature is that you can actually put the swords into the back part, which just clips on the same as uh, the other backpacks. But yeah, that's a good look. And, you know, it's a good way to just hold the weapons when she's in a neutral position. So just like how you can raise um, rooks. I, I need to... I need to check the actual names there. Rook's uh, turret can go up. You can also just put Shift's swords on her back. And I think that's an overall good thing. I do think it is a bit annoying how her hair kind of prevents her from, you know, looking forward with this. Unless you specifically put it on when she's looking forward. Which is a bit awkward and might actually be impossible now. Now I'm trying to actually do it. But yeah, you can mess around with that if you buy it yourself and overall it will work. I do quite like this figure but it's just it's the weakest in the line overall. And that just leaves ACRM who is the biggest good guy character and also technically the most modifiable. He has a lot of points of connection which I'll get into why there's so many points of connection on the characters 
towards the end. I don't have any of the add-on packs, so that's why I'm saving it to the end. But yeah, it's a very cool little robot character, and it has big feet, you know, it can stomp around a lot. It has very large, like, smashing hands. It's a really good look overall. Even the bit of articulation of the head works really well for, like, scanning, scanning, sort of look. It's a really... Overall, just really nice look. It kind of reminds me of, like, a basic Iron Man suit, like a knockoff Iron Man. But overall, it's a very nice design. It has little rocket boosters in the back of the feet. A lot of armor all over, really. And the nice metallic on the front of the body just really breaks it up. And I really like the, uh, I guess, intakes on the front. This is obviously a robot, not a mech suit. So it doesn't make all that much sense, but I suppose it's for cooling. And overall, I just... I think this is probably, this and Rook are probably my favourites, and they are also both very similar in overall aesthetic, you know, they have the big gauntlets, the big boots, the more basic upper arms and upper legs, and, you know, overall, they're the brawlers, they're the ones that go in, you know, they aren't afraid to get shot a bit, you know, they're, they're the cool characters, and I really do think that ACRM just kind of fits this entire aesthetic really well. I really like it. I will say his arms are a little bit loose, I suppose. They move fine around, but they have a little bit of in and out, which isn't supposed to be there. And, you know, that might be a little bit disappointing. It means that if a kid's playing with them a little bit too hard, you might break the arm. But overall, it's not an issue. They're a pound each. I don't think it'd be too big of a deal if one broke. Generally, generally. And that does leave us with just the alien faction, the enemies, the bad guys. And obviously we've already looked at the drone, so I'm going to take that one out of the way. And you know what? I'm going to look at the Symphoid first. This one is definitely the most interesting aesthetically. It's not just some sort of alien monster. It's a bit techno-organic. It kind of reminds me of the ACMR. It's kind of a machine, but it also has some very natural aspects, like all the detail on the legs and the arms for that matter, are just very, very interesting. And this does look like it would have different articulation. It is the exact same, except it doesn't have a head, which is all right. It's not great. It does allow for some pretty interesting little posing. And, you know, overall, I think it works for this sort of figure because at the end of the day, that is a really good look, in my opinion. It's a, it's a pose that I actually put figures like Carnage in on my, sh on my main shelf a lot. So, overall, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Aesthetically, I'll get onto that. Aesthetically, the red on the eyes, really nice. The purple in the intake, really cool. Unfortunately, there's no detailing on the back. In fact, that uh, intake literally doesn't have an outtake, which I think is a bit of a missed opportunity on the design, but overall, it's still fine. You do have a hand on that side that can be used for weapons like what the Brute has here. Um, but yeah. The other arm, which did fall off, is like a blade arm. And the reason why this fell off is because I was just messing around with the different accessories you can get for these, which, as I don't actually have any, I was just trying to see how they actually work. But you can actually get various packs for add-ons and accessories for all these different characters. And uh, with this one, it's mostly for the arms. But that does leave us with the Brute, which as I say, is very much a Doom character. It's a, demo it's a demon, it's a demonic creature. It has horns on its head, which the head is very weirdly articulated, where it's like, out of the packaging, it was actually like this, which I'm pretty sure is wrong. Especially, it seems as, like this, that's his face. So I'm pretty sure that's not correct. But yeah, it's pretty easy to just rotate it back around, and... I actually really like the look of it. Once again, the red eyes, really good effect. The overall skin is a bit more basic compared to the drone. It's pretty much exclusively, actually, I'd say it's 100% exclusively in the base plastic, but that's not really an issue. I think the detailing in the sculpt is plenty good enough, and depending on how the light catches it, you're kind of seeing it on camera, there is a little bit of shine and shimmer in the actual plastic, so overall, I'm perfectly fine with that. The weapon, you might think he's holding it a bit weird, and I do think that is the case as well. I would say that with the holes here, that would be the front. But at the same time, that makes a lot more sense of having like a blade at the front, 
and maybe these are what shoot? It's hard to tell really, it does fit either way in the hand, though I would say this weapon specifically, it feels like a completely different material to everything else in this line, where it's a little bit chalky, and I don't know what why that's the case, I don't know why it's a bit chalky compared to everything else, but that is something just to keep in mind, that is apparently normal, I don't know, but yeah, it's it's a very, very interesting weapon, it fits pretty well in his hand, it gives him a different weapon to have, I would think of a brute as being more of a brawler, but you know, still a very neat little character, and overall pretty happy with it. And then to start off the comparisons, this is the entire line next to each other, I think that it's actually scaled really well. I like that the drone is a little bit shorter and the brute's a bit bigger. You know, all the human characters are about the same height and then the robot is considerably taller. And then this thing, <laughs> it it's a bit of a weird scale, but it's also a very weird looking creature. So overall, they scale really well. And that's something that a lot of toy lines that don't reuse the same parts for every figure can sometimes struggle with. So... I'm actually pretty happy with this overall, it does work really nice. And for other companies' comparisons, we have a Cyberman and a Power of the Force Chewbacca. Both three and three quarter scale work really well with this. Obviously this is the good guys, I'll compare them with the bad guys in a second. But I really like this comparison. And then we have a Green Lantern movie, Green Lantern figure, and a Marvel Universe Punisher. And once again, really does work. Because these aren't based on anything in particular, they really do work with anything in the three and three quarter-ish range. And unfortunately, I don't have any G.I. Joes to compare with. But, you know, I'm sure they'll work pretty well if you're someone who collects that type of figure. And then, for the bad guys, the same Cyberman, the same Chewbacca. I think it works really well. I think, realistically, you could fit these into a Star Wars or a Doctor Who display if you really wanted to. And... At the end of the day, that's a really good thing that you can just kind of fit these into any display you want. I'm really fond of these. And then, once again, we have the Green Lantern and the Punisher. If you want these to be DC or Marvel bad guys, that is definitely an option that I think really works. And that really does bring it to the end of this review. These are some spectacular figures. If you're someone who likes 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, just in general, whether that be for Star Wars, for Marvel, for DC, for, you know, as I showed, for um, Doctor Who, if you're a fan of G.I. Joe, these are some really nice, somewhat unique pieces that you can add to your collection for a very cheap price. In, like, all in all, what is there? There's eight figures here, eight pound. The entire wave, eight pound. And I did kind of main mention it earlier, but I just want to go in a bit more detail. There are... A multitude of add-on packs, accessory packs, whatever you want to call them, which work with all the different characters, though only certain ones work with certain ones. So there is a Symphoid pack which only works with the Symphoid, the uh, Alien, and then there is a Robot pack which only works with the ACMR, or whatever it's called. I keep having to look at the packaging for it, but um, yeah, and then there's two weapon packs, one Alien and one Alpha Team. The Alpha Team one also obviously works with all the human characters, and then the alien one works with the brute and the drone. And unfortunately, at the two Poundlands that I've been to, um, since I knew that these were available, they didn't have any of the packs. I don't know if the packs are actually available in the UK yet. I'm sure they'll come over eventually if these actually remain popular, which, based on the fact that I went to the same Poundland twice, once I actually bought them, and then the second time, just because I was looking in general, and they'd actually had to restock them. And I noticed that because they were only stocking, I think, two of the robots when I went the first time, and I don't think... I think I took the only uh, brute. So they actually had full stock of both of them, so I believe they are selling pretty well, at least specific ones. And I'm not surprised, they're pretty cool little figures, and they're a pound. You know, they're pretty cheap for, for your kids, for your nieces and nephews or whatever. And there's a nice variety of characters, you know, you've got a bit of diversity there, you've got female characters, male characters, you've got um, African-American characters, which obviously is a really big draw for a lot of people. Having the robot is pretty interesting, having the big aliens, like the brute, is really interesting. Just overall, it's a very good set of figures, but yeah, 
that is going to be it for this review. So if you liked it, make sure to like it. Subscribe if you're around here and ring that bell so you never miss an upload. I try and get a new review out every Tuesday and Friday. And if you subscribe, you'll see them every time I upload them. But yeah, otherwise that's going to be it from me. I definitely recommend this. I can't, like, I can't say enough on how much I recommend these figures. I think they're so cool. But yeah, that's going to be it from me. And uh, yeah. Bye.